Hey everybody, it's Sunday. That means it's Adventures with Peps time in the Aliens, Xenomorph, Predator, Prometheus universe. We are painting Corporal Dwayne Hicks, obviously from Aliens 2, and Gale Force 9's Another Day in the Marine Corps, or Another Glorious Day in the Marine Corps, I should say. So who is Corporal Dwayne Hicks? He was a member of the United States Colonial Marine Corps, part of 2nd Battalion Bravo Team. He was a member of the combat unit deployed to LV-426 aboard the USS Aselico in 2179. He was sent to investigate the sudden loss of contact with the colony of Hadley's Hope. He was involved in combating the xenomorph infestation on the colony. Hicks was part of the 2nd Squad's gun team along with Private Drake. Uh, he was also the squad leader and motion tracker operator. When the unit's commanding officer, Lieutenant Gorman, was incapacitated, i.e. took a bang to the head, Hicks took over all charge of the mission as the ranking Marine. He was the only Marine to survive the incident, along with the civilians Ellen Ripley and Rebecca Jordan, a.k.a. Newt, and the US CM android Lance Bishop, who was badly damaged. Right, so that was a quick intro to the character. As you can see, I did prime in black. I then did a very heavy dry brush of gray. And then I dry brushed over that with Pallid uh, Witch Flush by GW. We then grabbed the Sand Golem Army Speed Painter, like I did with uh, Forgotten Her Name. Forgotten Her Name, what is her name? Vasquez, Vasquez. <laughs> That's who, if you've not seen that video, I'll put a link hopefully somewhere in this video uh, for the power of edit and it should either be in the comments below or in a little rectangle in the top of the camera. So I'm not going full movie accurate. That would be crazy. These are figures that you use in a board game. They need to look good from three foot away. They don't need to be movie accurate. So I'm not going to be going full on camo patterns on everything, but I am going to try and make them look as close to a colonial marine as I can. So I always do the under fatigues. So the trousers, his uh, shirt, I'm doing as a sand golem color. Is it sand golem? Oh my God. Yeah, it is sand golem. My brain is absolutely fried. It's so hot in Ottawa. It's getting ridiculous this summer. It's so hot. It's like in the 40s at the moment. I am melting. But yeah, uh, Sand Golem is going on first. And I'm pretty happy. This model seems to have issues with its printing. I think it's... Or casting. I don't know how plastic miniatures work. But he's got very soft features on his shotgun. Which is a little bit disappointing. And... There's no real detail on his face. I feel Vasquez had a lot more detail to her. I don't know why that is, but it's just how it's happened with this model. So I'm just going to finish up these last touches of Sangolem. As you can see, I did his trousers, his uh, arm sleeves, and the chin strap on his helmet. This was really fiddly because I didn't want the speed paint to flow everywhere. So I'm just taking my time to be nice and neat. Do it once, do it nice and neat. Okay, there we go. I think we've got everything. If there's any areas near the body armor that's overrun, I'm not too worried on that. Because we're going to use a nice dark green. That will completely cover that up. And we're going to move on to that now. And we're going to be using camo cloak green. Give it a good shake. And we'll start applying this on. So... I had a look at a few of the is it Nectar toy line of the alien figures, or Mecta. They produce quite a few of the alien models. So I find it as a very good reference point. Because even though the movie frames are great to see the uniform, they don't always get them at the angle that you are looking at. So for example, I have no idea what Hicks's back looked like, because I couldn't find a movie image of it. But luckily, I could in the toy figure range. So it gave me a rough idea of what stuff should kind of look like. So I'm going to start with his shin guards and his knee pads. And I'm slowly going to work my way up to the helmet. 
I do it this way because I find that the base dries. So by the time I've reached the top, the bottom half of the model is finished again, and then I can start at the bottom and work my way up to the top again. I don't like working top to bottom because naturally where my hands are going to sit, I don't want to accidentally touch the model, especially when I'm spinning it around if I'm trying to hit something from underneath on the body armor. I don't want to flip it over and accidentally touch the helmet and rub off this wash, because if you do that, it's a real pain to get a nice consistency again on it. You kind of get a tide mark where the original paint was. And yeah, it's super annoying. Okay, this is going to take me a while, so we'll pop back once I've got this done. Right, I think I've got all the green done. Let's just do one quick turnaround. See if I've missed anywhere. I'm pretty sure I haven't, but better safe than sorry. And then, when that's dry, we grab the Crusader skin. Not a very exciting step, you know the drill. I'm going to slap it on his arms. And then onto his face. It is quite comical that he's rolled his sleeves up. I don't know if all the marines are going to be like that. I know Drake definitely will be. I might paint Drake next to have both smart gunners done. I want to do Hudson because I think he's a great character. And then I don't know. After that, maybe I should spread out the characters. Do some of the, <laughs> the, uh, the low-hanging characters, let's call them. The ones that are lesser known, like uh, Sp oh, what's his name? Is it Spudmir? Ferrero is another one. Uh, who we got? We got Hudson, uh, Wabowski, Crow, Frost, Dietrich, Apone. We got a few actually. We got quite a few characters. Maybe I'll try and work out who's in what squad. Maybe we'll do it that way. We'll actually finish a squad. So Hudson is a squad leader of the second team, I believe. So we'll work out who else is in his team, and maybe that's the way we'll go through it. I wonder actually who is in his squad. Hmm. There's going to be something here somewhere that will tell me which it was. Uh, I'm just reading through his little bio whilst I finish up the skin color. Right, I worked out the rest of second squad. It is led by Hicks. Then we have Mark Drake on the uh, smart gun. Then we have Rico Frost and Cynthia Dietrich. So Frost and Dietrich both have flamers in this game. Uh, and then first squad is Vasquez, Hudson... Wabowski with the flamey unit and Crow with the classic pulse rifle. So I think that's what we're going to do. I'm splitting them into squads. We'll do second squad first, then we'll do a pwn, then we'll work our way through first squad. And then I've got Gorman done already, which will then leave. I've also got Newt and Ripley done, which I never did a video for, which sadly, but I then have the Android. Bishop. I have, oh, what's his name? The company man. What's the company man's name? Oh my days. Gorman. Not Gorman. I've said Gorman. That's the. <laughs> oh my god. Why can I not remember names? Goddamn Carter. Carter in it. It's Carter. And then I've got Ripley in the power loader suit and uh, Ripley carrying Newt. Plus uh, Spudmere and Ferrero, the pilots. So I've got all the figures. So we, we will have a platoon at the end of this. We'll have the full set, which would be quite cool. And then maybe we could play Space Station Zero using them. That's a good idea. Have them searching the way through the station. Swap out any enemies with Xenomorph models to make it feel like a bit more of a bug hunt scenario. Anyway, back to the model. I have waffled on so much, I apologize. We're about 16 minutes into the painting time, and I have pulled out the Grim Black, and I'm only going to use this on his boots, just to make it stand out a little bit. The floor, I will use metallic paints on, just to make it look a bit different from the rest of the model. 
And then we go on to the hardened leather, which of course is going to be used on all the belt pouches. The shotgun case that he has on his back. And we'll just work our way around the model nice and cleanly. Don't want to mess it up too badly. We're now at that stage where the details are getting smaller. <laughs> and also slightly harder to reach because his, uh, his weapon, his military weapon, it's all behind this shotgun. Luckily the shotgun is going to be dark grey and a dark brown. So if I do hit it with this lighter shade, I'll be fine. But I just want to make sure I'm being neat and tidy with this stage. I also noticed I get about halfway through it. And as I do the, the shotgun cover, as you'll see in a minute, I accidentally went back to Crusader Flesh. Luckily it mixed with the brown. But I started noticing that it was getting lighter and lighter for some reason. I was like, what have I done? So I think it's that dab there. It's that dab there. And I start putting this on and I'm like, this has gone really light. Why has it gone really light? And I dab a second time. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm getting very confused why it's looking a completely different brown. And I'm like, what is going on? And I'm staring at it. I'm like, something's not right here. And then I finally realize, and I load up my brush with the proper brown again. And I just go over the whole lot. Plus side of the speed paints is that when they're still wet, they're very easy to mix into. So I was quite easily able to fix that little issue that I created myself. I then couldn't remember if I'd done the rest correctly. So I just worked my way back around the model, uh, making sure I didn't have any issues. So I'm going to continue as webbing. I'm also going to do his wristbands with this brown. Seems to make sense. And we can move on to the next color. Next up was the Grave Lord Grey, my go-to metallic color. If it's a metallic weapon, this is the one I use for it. I just don't like actual metallics. I know I'm going to use it on his base, but that's so it stands out more. But yeah, I'm really not a fan of metallic paints. I don't like the way they look. It looks very forced when next to the normal paints. So I always go for the Grave Lord Grey if I'm doing like a, a steel, I guess, or an iron color, a weapon metallic, I guess. So it's not stupidly shiny. Looks like they've doled it down maybe with machine grease or some sort of camo paint maybe has gone on it to make it not so shiny. You don't know if they're going in for stealth operations or whatever. And then I'm going to work on the base. So we'll come back once the base is done. And there you go, I've painted it black. It's going to give me the perfect base to do metallics off. And then we grab the slaughter red. This is going to be a very quick step. There's only two places I'm using the red on. And it's going to be his helmet lights. Now, I know I probably should have gone with yellow. But I really didn't want yellow. These models, because they're based on real life modern day army color schemes, I guess you'd say. They're very muted, duller colors. I wanted a bit of brightness in there, so I felt like the red worked. Maybe he's shooting out uh, some sort of infrared spectrum that he could see through. I don't know, I'm making this all up. I just didn't want to use yellow, to be honest with you. So that's that step now complete. And we are now on to the final color. And that is going to be not Slaughter Red. We just did Slaughter Red, John. It's going to be the dark wood. We're going to do shotgun casing. I'm not going to bore you with the flooring. I'm just going to paint it lead belcher and chuck some washers on it. And I think we're pretty much done. We can go to the glamour shots. I'll put Vasquez in there as well. So we can start watching the teams grow. And I think we're going to try and do the next Marine of, his, of uh, Hicks's squad. I think we'll go with frost next i think frost would be a good one uh, but yeah make sure you like subscribe all that good stuff if you want to see space station zero drop me a comment saying yes do that john if not 
tough luck because I probably will do it, but it'd be nice to know that you support the idea. Also, let me know if you want to watch a playthrough of another glorious day in the Marine Corp. Marine Corps? Marine Corp? Marine Corps. I don't know what it is. Core. Let's go Core. I think it is Core. Um, somebody's going to shout at me in the comments. I'm sorry. I don't know. But yeah. Until next time. Cheers for watching.